I am David Nash. I have uh, been teaching at the Full Stack Online um, uh, course at App Academy for about a year and a half. Uh, and uh, I started teaching right after I graduated uh, from the same program uh, in which I went from basically almost no programming knowledge, no knowledge about web development to being able to build a full stack web application. And I had a great time doing it, such a great time that I decided to become a teacher here. Uh, and so I really enjoyed the, the act of, of, of teaching this stuff as much as I enjoyed learning about it. Uh, so today what we're going to be doing is building a simple tic-tac-toe game uh, using the Python programming language. Uh, that is hopefully is going to be fun. Uh, if if you feel prepared to, if you have the ability to, and really all you need technically to, to code along is is a any type of text editor. Uh, feel free to code along with me, uh, and at the end you'll have a fully functioning uh, tic tac toe game that you built with me. Uh, when I'm done, it, we will uh, be uploading the code to our Discord channel. And so if you're not already a member of it, it's a great idea to join it. So for one, to be able to get access to the, the finished code. Uh, but also, um, there, if you uh, decide to make use of our free online program in App Academy Open, uh, that Discord channel is a great place to get resources, to get help uh, from, from people at App Academy, from fellow students, other instructors. Uh, and so hopefully there is a link to the Discord channel in the, uh, in the chat. And definitely go ahead and uh, join that channel. Um, and so without further ado, I think we're going to get started on this game. Uh, let me share my screen. All right. So I have on the right side here, I have some kind of boilerplate code. I didn't really want to code all this out from the very, you know, just this sort of tedious bits right here. So hopefully this will work. I'm going to try to post this in the chat for anyone who's following along. I don't know what the formatting is going to do, uh, but this will be sort of the structures that we have that will. All right. And it's acted. All right. So there, yeah. So this should, uh, <laughs> that, that should do if anyone wants to cut along. Otherwise you can also just kind of copy it from what you see on the screen here. This is all that there's four variables that I have set. Um, and I'm just going to have them on the side basically this whole time. So we know what uh, these data types that we're, or these uh, variables that we're dealing with is. OK, so first things first. Hopefully everyone here knows a little bit uh, about how to build a uh, or how a tic-tac-toe game functions, right? You have this nine uh, three by three board. Uh, and players take turns putting either X and O's. If you get three in a row, then you win. It's a fairly simple game, which makes it a really an ideal candidate for uh, for just a beginner's coding course in it. So what I'm going to do is kind of just sketch out the problem as a whole, right? So what we need to do uh, is do, build this tic-tac-toe game. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down into smaller bits. That's what's known as decomposition. Decomposition is sort of one of the key principles of computer science. It's the act of looking at a large problem, a large problem that might be so challenging or complex so as to almost seem impossible to solve, and breaking it down into smaller problems, into smaller, more soluble problems. And if it's complex enough, this might involve multiple steps of breaking it down into a subproblem and breaking that subproblem down into smaller and smaller problems until you have something that is really easy to, to handle or digest, or even just a trivial solution. With tic-tac-toe, we're not going to need to do too many iterations. Uh, but this is really a good first step when you're dealing with, not just in, in coding, but really with any problems in life, you break it down into smaller problems. The way in which you break them down is fairly arbitrary, right? You can pick a whole bunch of different ways, a whole bunch of different sub-problems that we need to solve um, to, to, to solve tic-tac-toe. But it is still important to break it down. And that really can help you begin your roadmap of how you want to build, how you want to solve this problem of creating a tic-tac-toe game. So this is the way that I've decided to break it down. The first problem, and this is when you're, whether or not you're writing, playing tic-tac-toe on a piece of paper or coding out a game for it, you need to draw the board, right? The first step would be to draw the board. Cool. So that's that. probably after you've drawn the board with paper or a computer, you want to start putting your moves in. So for, um, 
a computer program, we're probably going to want to prompt the users for input. Okay. Um, at this point, you're going to want to redraw the game board. Okay. So once we've re redrawn the game board, at this point, we want to really we want to see if the game is over. We want to check if one of the winners have won, or possibly we filled all of the spaces on the board. So that's step four. That's the the, the fourth sub problem that we want to solve. So we want to check for uh, a winner, or check for the end of the game. And then finally, this might be considered sort of a sub problem of four, but I'm going to do it as a separate one. I'm going to say declare the winner. And end the game. And so that's it. It's a fairly simple game, fairly simple solution to the problems. One thing to note is that you'll see one and three are kind of redundant. We might want to take that into account. They might be considered really one sub problem itself. Other thing you want to check is that with tic tac toe, this is an iterative process. We're going to be basically doing steps two, three, and four a whole bunch of times. So what we might want to do is actually add this to as kind of another sub problem is we want to loop through the previous three steps. And so that's basically it, right? And so one thing that you'll notice if in just the simple act of writing all this down, we've basically begun to write our code. This is not something that a computer would recognize, would understand, it would not do anything for us. But it's a broad high level ex explanation of really what goes on in tic-tac-toe. And it's already, we've already begun the process of software development here. We've already begun the process of coding out this tic-tac-toe game. The next step normally uh, for a sufficiently complex problem might be to actually start writing in pseudocode, which is very, very human readable, easy to understand language that broadly approximates what a, a, a programming language might be looking for. Uh, but it's in a way that's readable, it's it's informal and inexact. I'm going to skip that step uh, because we don't have so much time. But for a large enough problem, you actually will end up saving time when you go through all these sort of sem somewhat tedious seeming steps of, of creating your code. Uh, but it is really useful to, to go through all of this planning in order to make sure that you have um, a really good idea about how you're going to go about starting this. In point, we actually have the functions uh, to that, that we need in order to create this board, uh, in, in order to create this game. So I'm just going to define them right here. I'm going to define uh, draw board. That's a function, right? So that's just from from step one. And in Python, Python is very uh, white space aware, which means that it determines its code blocks based on indentation. And so that's this pass here is basically an indicator to my linter and into Python as a whole that I have written this function and I'm intending to put code in this block, uh, but um, I don't have anything in here right now. So let me show what would happen when I create my next function, which is gonna be prompt for, I'll call it prompt for move, and I don't put it in there, right? Let me just move on to my next function, which is gonna be check, uh, check for winner, right? So it's called check for winner. Now we're getting all these, my linters is, is giving me some warnings. And that's because right here, when I start a code block, I'm putting this, this colon at the end of it. Um, this is a function definition. Python's looking at it and saying, okay, I'm expecting a code block, but there's nothing in here. Uh, so in order to get rid of that to uh, satisfy my linter, I'm going to put these passes in. All right, so now we have our three functions, right? You'll notice that this first one corresponds with my first decomposed problem draw the board as well as the third one. Then we have our prompt for input, check for end. Loop is something that we're gonna handle actually in a main organizing function. Um, and then all we need to do finally is uh, declare the winner. Okay, cool. And then I'll pass that. So first thing I'm gonna do uh, now that I've defined uh, my four sub problems basically is I'm gonna start drawing the board. And this is where some of this stuff comes in here, right? This is a string. This board variable right here uh, is a string. 
these three uh, quotation marks at the beginning in Python allow you to have a multi-line string quite easily. And so this basically just a very long string uh, that has mostly a bunch of spaces. There's a pipe here, another pipe here. There's some underscores here. And then we have these nine numbers. Those are going to be the positions. That's where what we're going to be ultimately replacing with our X's and O's. So let's get started on that. First thing that I need to do in this particular case, in order to make it easier to see these, these different variables, I've defined them in a completely separate, separate file. So in order to, to have access to them, we're going to actually need to import them, which in Python uh, is fairly straightforward. They're in the same directory. So all I need to do is basically say, I want to import these different variables from game info.py. So I can just do from game info import board or uh, board matrix uh, potential moves and then finally pass moves is the last one don't see it over here but it's at the very bottom pass moves it's just an empty list right there which we'll get to these different data types in just a second okay so now that we've imported them uh, we can make use of them in our um, in our uh, main.py. Okay, so now, actually, uh, in order to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this main function that I mentioned earlier. What it's going to do is it's going to basically hold the structure of the entire. It's going to selectively invoke the different functions that, that we're going to define during this during uh, the stream, and it's going to add a little bit of additional logic to sort of basically organize everything together. So all of these functions are going to be invoke, invoked from within our main function. So what let's do, um, let's invoke draw board. New board is equal to draw board. And we're going to pass in, let's see, we'll pass in board and board matrix. OK. So within here, we'll need to, since we're passing them in, we probably want to actually accept them as parameters in our draw board. Okay, so now ultimately what I want to do is let me just kind of explain my thought process of how I'm going to draw this board. I have this kind of template board is what we could call it. This is going to stay the same. This is going to remain exactly the same throughout the entire of my program. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it in as a variable, pass it in here, accept it, store it in this board variable within this function. And then basically I'm going to iterate through each character each of these characters, character at zero, character at one, all the way through the very end till we get to our last character here. And if that character is one of these and our board matrix at that same position has you know a different value, we're gonna replace it. And so just to, to sort of demonstrate this working, I'm gonna replace the center value that's with an X, just to make sure that when we're trying to replace um, we actually are, the, the, the logic of this code is sound. So in order to do this, I'm going to loop through that board. And in Python, looping is very easy. If you want to loop through a string, a list, uh, really any, any collection, all you need to do is use this for keyword and we'll just do for whatever variable name we want to call it. And then in this case, I'm going to do care. For, so for care in board. And so what this is going to do is it's going to individually look at every single character in this board and one by one it's going to store it in this care variable that i've defined here and so we're going to do for care in board and we need to check if it's one of those numbers if it's a seven eight nine four five six and two or three fortunately string actually has a method on it called is digit all that this does is check whether or not this is a digit right so it's going to return false for the string, the, the space that we have here, for the pipe we have here, all of these spaces, these underscores. Uh, but when we hit this seven, this eight, this nine, any of those nine numbers, it's gonna return true. Uh, and so if that character is a digit, and you're starting to notice probably, hopefully, just how readable Python is. It is actually somewhat, honestly, when I read pseudocode, it actually looks a little bit like Python. I get confused sometimes. Uh, but anyway, so if this character is a digit, then we're going to replace it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do care equals 
uh, let's see, board matrix at, and so what I'm doing here is I'm keying into this board matrix. And so let's go a little bit into what a what board matrix is. Board matrix is a list. If you are familiar with arrays in JavaScript, it is very, very similar to an array. It is an ordered collection of elements. In this case, I have a bunch of single character strings. Um, I have a seven, eight, nine, four. Now I have an X, but uh, in the beginning of the game, it's going to be a five. All of these. I have it sort of formatted so it looks two-dimensional. And in fact, in a previous iteration of this game, it was two-dimensional. I decided to simplify the code a little bit and turn it into one-dimensional. Um, that's actually why it's called a matrix. This probably should be called board list. Um, but I formatted it so it looks kind of like this, right? This seven corresponds with this seven, the eight with the eight, the nine with the nine, and so on. Um, but this is just a single one-dimensional list. This is the first or zeroth, since lists are zero index, the zeroth element, the first, the second, this four is the third, x is fifth, or x is fourth, and then and so on until we have to our eighth element um, in our nine element list. Okay, so we're going to need to index into that, but we don't actually have an index. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to define an index. So we'll just do index is equal to zero. So we're going to start there. And so I'm going to grab that. So the first time this if statement that we have on line 17, the first time that evaluates to true, index is going to be zero. And the care in the board, this care is going to be that seven. This is going to be the first digit that we encounter within that string through this loop uh, in our string. So what's going to happen is when this, this evaluates to true, and then we're going to replace, we're going to say character is equal to board matrix zero, the zeroth element, which in this case is seven. So we're just going to replace the seven with a seven. So that's not particularly exciting. Um, but when we hit that X, hopefully we need to line it up so that that five is going to be replaced by an X. So in order to in order to accomplish that, we need to increment our index. So uh, in Python, the syntax to do that would be something like this: I, index plus equals one. This is the same thing as doing index equals index plus one. Saying basically, grab the index, uh, or sorry, grab the value of index plus one, store it in index. Uh, this is a slightly shorter way to do it: plus equals one. Index is equal to itself plus one. All right. Once we're done uh, with that. Um, all we need to do is store that character in our new board. So new board, we're going to start off as an empty string. So once we've determined whether or not it's a digit, if it's a digit, we're going to replace it with whatever we have in our board matrix. And in that case, we're going to do, we're going to concatenate this value to our new board. So, um, What's going to happen here is just just to sort of explain uh, the 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 process of this loop is we're going to take a look at our first element, right? So that's right here. This is our first element in our board. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to check whether or not it is a digit. In this case, it's not. Uh, and then we're just going to add it as it is to our new board. So now our new board is a, a string with a single space in it. We're going to do it the same here, same here, same here, same here, same here. Again, it's a different character, but we're not going to enter it. We're going to send that same character unaltered into our new string. And, and we'll go on and on and on and on until we get, eventually we get to our 7. That's the point at which we enter this loop that we have here on line 18. That loop is going to reassign character, that character, this 7, to whatever value is in the corresponding board matrix. Um, then... We're going to increment our index. Um, and finally, we're going to add that to our new board. So since it's a 7 in here, we're going to replace the 7 with a 7. So not particularly exciting, like I said. Um, but what we've crucially done is we've incremented our index. And so the next time we hit a digit, index is going to be 1, and that's going to point at our 8. And so hopefully, each of these characters is going to correspond with the appropriate element in our in our list in our one dimensional list here. Okay. So finally, you'll see that I'm storing the output from draw board. So the return from draw board is going to be stored in this new board variable. And so ultimately, I'm just going to return new board. So now 
that board altered in such a way that each of these is going to be replaced with each of these values in here. Um, hopefully, is going to now we have a an X in here. So let's give it a shot. All right. So the problem that we have here is there's nothing being printed out to the screen. And that's because I'm invoking draw board in the main function, but I haven't actually invoked main. So basically, Python's going to read this entire file and say, you didn't actually ask me to do anything. You just defined a bunch of functions. So we actually need to invoke our main function here. And that is going to get everything started. So if we run this function, it's going to store all of these function names. It's going to say, these are what these function names do. And then finally, when we get to line 39, Python's going to be, OK, actually, you want me to do something. You want me to actually do something other than storing the names of various uh, functions uh, in your memory for you. And so now we invoke main. And hopefully, um, we're, let me, oh, I didn't save this one. So let me run that. And there we go. So we successfully iterated through our string. We have one by one stored each character in that string in a new string. Uh, and when it, uh, when the board matrix at the position that's appropriate for, uh, for the position in our, in our, in our board is at an X or is something other than the number that's already there, we've replaced it. So that's actually a pretty good start. Also, uh, so we have successfully, uh, so, I mean, we're a quarter of the way through this solution already. So let's <coughs> let's uh, see what we want to do next. Probably the next thing we want to do is prompt for a loop. And so let's do, let's see. Let's move on to our prompt for loop. So down here, what we're going to want to do is let's invoke that. And we'll probably want to store it in our uh, probably well. Let's just let's just define the function itself first. Okay, so prompt for move. Very very conveniently, Python has a built-in function called input. And what input does for you is it stores it. It basically prompts the user for something in the terminal, and then it stores or it returns the value, the string value of whatever the person typed into the terminal. So we're going to store the output. So this is giving the, the users, the players, the choice of what they want to put um, in their, you know, what they want to put in the terminal. And then based on that, we're going to decide ultimately where we want to actually put that character. So we're going to say, it's your turn uh, player. So what I'm doing here is called string interpolation. What this allows us to do is allows us to replace what we have in brackets here uh, with a variable. So we can dynamically set what the string is actually going to is actually going to say. And so in this case, um, it's gonna, either going to be x or o. So we're going to say, it's your turn, x. Um, pick a position. And so that position is going to correlate with one of these positions on the board. So since we're passing in a variable, we should probably have a variable here. So that's where we're we're going to grab the variable, whatever main is telling us that variable is. So let me just make this a little bit bigger so the whole screen is visible. We can still see our variables. OK, so now we've prompted the player for a, a, a position, for a choice where they want to put their move, and we're storing it in this choice variable. So now, uh, based on that, we need to sort of come up with some logic and determine where this, what we're actually going to do. And this is a good place to talk about basically how I've set up this game. This board is just for show. This is something that it makes it easy for the players to see visually what is going on in their game. I have also decided to have this board matrix. You could think of a way to just specifically just have this board and you could be adding values to that board and use this board to keep track of basically of who's, who's winning, of what's going on. Uh, I think in this case, a list is a lot easier for 
me to create the logic for for the computer to understand what's going on. This string, you'd have to jump through a lot of hoops to be able to both display to the user uh, what ultimately the game looks like, as well as make it easy to determine who, whether or not someone is one and who that person is who is one. And so we're ultimately going to be altering our board matrix so that I can easily determine a winner position for that. And so we need to come up with some logic for how we're going to ultimately um, choose that, that player. And so what I'm going to do is take a look at this potential moves dictionary. And so a dictionary and a is not um, is not dissimilar from an object in JavaScript, if you're familiar with that. A dictionary in Python is a set, a collection of key value pairs. And so you'll see here, the keys in my dictionary are the strings one through nine. They're in a little bit jumbled order. And I probably want to explain my, my choice here, why I put it as instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, or what you might read. Uh, one thing you'll notice if you have a keypad on your keyboard, that this is actually the exact position of your, your keys. So it might be easier for you to intuitively think of where the position will be if you just look at your keypad and you can put it in the bottom left of your keypad, that's the one. Upper right is the nine, the middle is the five. Well, that would remain the same. But this makes it so that you can just kind of map the positions on the board to your keypad. Anyways, so this dictionary uh, is um, just basically mapping. Uh, another word for dictionary is a hash map. It's going to be mapping these keys to these values. And you'll notice here, if you take a look at our dictionary, the key seven corresponds with the number zero. That is the index of the seven here. The key eight maps with the number. Remember, so this is a number data type, or this is a string of the number. It's an important distinction. But this eight corresponds with the one index, the one number. And that applies for each of these keys here. So this allows us basically to convert what that user has typed in to the, into the prompt into a number that we're going to use as an index uh, for our board matrix. So let me change this back to a five so I don't forget. And so that's what I'm going to do. So basically what I'm going to say is I'm going to do uh, that the move is equal to potential choices or potential moves at a uh, choice. And so what this is doing for us is basically going to, you type in five, it's going to grab that four. It's going to, based on potential moves. And so now move is going to be, or now move is going to be set to the number four. Then the next step, all we need to do in this case would be to index uh, into our board matrix. And so we can say board matrix um, at move is equal to, in this case, player. So the player is going to be either an X or an O. It's going to be a string, a single character, either the X or the O. So we add that in there, and then we can just finish up, right? So that is that. Let's invoke that in main. So we're going to do a prompt for loop, and then we haven't, we haven't come up with a way to determine who the player is, so I'm just going to directly pass in X so we can just kind of test it a little bit. So finally, uh, once we have actually prompted for a move, we're going to want to redraw the board. Ultimately, we're going to use a loop to do this successfully, but for now, I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. And so now we're basically we're going to draw the board, we're going to prompt for a move, and then we're going to draw the board again. And so let's give it a shot. Okay, so it's your turn X, pick a position. That string interpolation that we did works perfectly fine. That's good to know. We inserted that X in there. Now let's see if adding the position works as well. Give it a shot. And look, I typed in a six and it actually filled in the six. It replaced the six with an X. And so it looks like we have successfully redrawn our board. This is really, honestly, we're, we're mostly done here. But there's a couple issues. One, I don't really like the fact that it's just keeping adding to this new screen. I want it to just look like it's kind of dynamically rendering. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to import another um, another module. This one is called OS. So I'm going to import it a little bit differently. One, you'll notice that I actually, if you take a look at my file structure, I don't have OS. 
it is part of the Python standard library. And so it actually is available. As soon as you have Python, you have generally, you're going to have OS available for you. OS is a really powerful module that allows you to directly op access your operating system. And so be careful with it in Python. You definitely can, can make some commands that will, you know, might potentially mess things up. Uh, hopefully if you're familiar with how to use your terminal, you know what to avoid. In this case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just invoke that OS, right? So I'm going to, in my draw board, because that's where I need to, to worry about showing the board, I'm going to just invoke uh, OS. So OS.system, what this call is going to allow us to do is basically pass things directly into the system. I'm running on a Mac system, so I have clear. Um, but I know for Windows system, the, I think the PowerShell uses CLS to clear your screen. Um, and so I'm going to put some logic name equals. This should work uh, for most people's systems if you are coding along. Basically, this what this logic is doing is saying if the OS name is NT, that's going to be a Windows system. We're going to we're going to run the terminal command CLS. Otherwise, we're going to run clear. So. This should work for you. You might need to mess around a little bit. You might need to, yeah, please do not, uh, do not run RMRF baby. Fortunately, I don't have any, uh, a folders named baby. So that I'm safe here. Um, but yes, definitely. Like I said, you can run powerful command. You can run dangerous commands. Anything you run in your terminal, uh, will be run with this os.system command. I'm just running clear. All that's going to do is remove, uh, what I have on my screen. Um, so that's the first step. Let's, uh, I'm going to assume that works. I'm not going to demonstrate it, but hopefully what that's going to do is make it look like instead of we're printing up a new board, makes it look like we're going to replace the characters on our board with new characters. The next thing that we've done, we want to do is kind of not hard code this X in here, right? I want to be able to figure out programmatically in the program without telling it explicitly who my, um, who my player is. And this is where we're going to get to the looping. So that's also one of the other problems. We're only asking the player once, and then we're exiting the game. So if I run this here, oops. Uh, oh, I put a, let me just replace that S with an F. Um, this is also, just as an aside, you don't need to fully understand this. Again, I explained a little bit, but this is a ternary. It's saying basically if the OS name is NT, we're doing the CLS. Otherwise, we're doing clear. Um, again, this is another example of Python being fairly straightforward in terms of what's going on. Okay, so um, yeah, like I said, we save it. We print it up. I'll say five. We look like we're just replacing it. That looked good. But then the game's over. We don't want to do it that way. We want to actually keep doing this. We want to keep asking for input until somebody has won. So let's do that real quick. So we're going to do, there's a couple different ways to do this, but I'm going to do while, I'm going to use a while loop. So what this while loop is doing is, in this case, it's going to loop while this, what I passed in here, this value is false. Now, in general, this true is always going to be true. So what this is really doing is just saying just loop forever. So if we do it this way, we're going to need to figure out a way to get it to stop. But for now, this is fine. This is going to allow us to keep asking for, for input and just continuing to, to ask to, to, to draw the board. Um, so what I'm going to do here is come up with a condition to set uh, my to, you know to set uh, which player is, is going on i'm also going to um start coming up with how we're going to set our end condition so one way i'm going to do that is to have our moves be numbered so the, the first move number is going to be one then we're going to enter this while loop uh and each at the end of each while loop what i'm going to do is i'm going to increment that so it through each while loop our move number is going to be, at the end of it, it's going to just be incremented by one. 
This is going to allow us to find an end condition, right? You don't never have more than nine moves in a tic-tac-toe game, but it also is going to allow us to determine whose turn it is. So what up? <laughs> Excuse me. What I'm going to do is do an if condition. So if move number mod two is equal to zero, then player is equal to O. Okay, so for anyone who... No, that's not an O, that's a zero. And that is... There we go. There, the O and the zero should not be right next to each other on the keyboard. Uh, so... There we go. What this is doing is checking the mod of our move number. And if you're not familiar with mod, uh, you might be familiar with the term remainder. And so... Uh, the, what mod does for you is it basically divides the first number by the second one and gives you what the remainder is. And so, you know, for example, let's do 10 mod uh, 3. 10, 3 goes into 10 three times, right? So you can't do more than three threes in a 10. And then there's one more number left off. So that would mean that mod, 10 mod 3 is equal to 1. One interesting benefit that you'll see a lot in programming is that... Um, that means that even numbers mod two are always zero. Odd numbers mod two are always one. So what this is doing is saying, basically, if this number is even, the player is equal to O. Otherwise, if the number is odd, right, those are the only two possible conditions, either an even or an odd number, uh, then player is X. And so this is going to allow us to each loop of our, of our, um, our while loop or each iteration of our while loop player is going to switch. It's going to oscillate between player uh, O and player X. So now, instead of hard coding it in here, I can just pass in player. So now, we can see that we are doing, you know, switching between our characters. Oh, well, I'm not switching between characters. Um, why am I not switching between characters? Um, if my number two, da, 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 otherwise, I probably forgot to save. Okay, so let's try that again. So we got X, then we get an O, then we get an X, then we get an O. There we go. And so now it's allowing to switch between between characters. But we still have a couple problems. First, um, If I type in a zero, right, that's not a valid position on the board. We're going to get this error, right? We need to we need to put in a check in our prompt for input to make sure that the, the players are not putting any invalid concepts or any invalid inputs there. So that's the first thing. Second thing is I put a nine here. Let's say now it's O. O wants it to be nine or wants to put in a nine too. Now it's overwriting the previous one. That's an illegal move in tic-tac-toe. So that's another issue that we have here. So... Um, the other issue that we have is we're not actually, and this is to be expected because we haven't done it yet, we haven't defined a win condition. So O has clearly won this game, but we haven't actually um, declared O to be the winner. Um, the same thing is going to happen if I try to uh, if I try to fill the board and end it in a tie because we haven't checked for that either. So we have a couple things that we want to do now. We want to... Let's do first, let's do in here, let's do the error handling. So the two conditions that we have are that we want to avoid are putting an invalid character, putting a character that is not part, that is not one of our one through nines, as well as putting a character that has already been chosen. We, want, we don't want to fill a board that's already, or fill a position that's already been filled. So that sounds like to me, that sounds like two if conditions. So we'll say if. Oh, we'll probably want to do this after the player does their input. So if choice not in potential moves, right? So what this is doing, again, this is, you can probably guess a little bit maybe what is happening here because it's fairly, very straightforward. Python is just saying, if this choice is not in potential moves. And so potential moves has a whole bunch of things. By default, Python, when you say, when you're checking if a choice is not in potential moves, um, it's going to check the keys. If we want to be more explicit, we can do not in potential move dot keys. This is a method that's going to automatically pick all of the keys uh, in our dictionary uh, and 
you will have that dictionary list here. So this will basically give you a list of the seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, one, two, three. Those are the list of all the, the legal spots on the board. So that's perfect. So if it's not in there, what we want to do is we want to print, let's see, uh, please enter a valid value. Okay. So that's first thing right there. So now we also want to do if choice in past moves. And so what this is going to do is going to look through this list that I have down here. It's currently empty. And so we need to find a way both to check this, right? So if choice is in our past moves, uh, then we want to print uh, that space has already been taken. Try again. Okay. And so now we ha we have that. All we need to do really is um, at this point we need to create our new else, right? We're not returning anything. Uh, so we need to make sure that this only happens, this block, we're only adding to our board matrix if these two uh, turn out to be false. In fact, I'll even do for this one, we only want one of these to be the case. So we'll do LF choice in pass move. LF is like else if uh, in JavaScript, if you're familiar. And I don't know why they call it LF in Python. Um, you can take it up with Guido Van Rosum. But uh, what this is going to do, basically, it ensures that we only enter one of these if blocks. We're either going to print the first thing, we're going to print the second thing, or we're going to do the logic here, right? And so what we can do is else move. That's what we're. That's where we convert our player input into an index. Uh, we can actually add to our matrix using that index. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to add that to our pass moves. We want to add um, our pass. We want to add the really our, I guess our choice to our pass moves, we can use the append function. So this is a built in function that all lists have available on them. Um, it's the instance method called append. And what it's going to do is going to just add this to the end of our list, whatever we pass in here is going to be added to the end of our list. So what this is going to ensure that every time that somebody makes a move, that's going to we're going to have a record of that in our past moves. And now, if it has been selected already, then so the user is going to be informed that this move is not legal and they should probably enter a new move. And so let's give it again. I do not know how to spell position. Let's give it a shot. All right, cool. So let's try picking a position. So six, cool. Right, that's well. Let's try to pick six again. So O is going to try to pick six. But I forget to save. It was really adding up all the time, but I've forgotten to save here. So let's. Save. Okay, cool. So now let's try six and then six again. Um, I'm forgetting some type of logic here. Pass moves dot append choice. I'll have choice and pass moves. Why is this not happening? Um, not certain why that's not happening actually. Move equals position move, pass moves that append choice. Let me make sure I say this correctly. Oh, you know what's happening actually? What is happening is for some reason I am overwriting that actual code there. So what I want to do is let me just make sure that the system clear is not what's causing this problem. Let me give it a shot here. Run this six. I'll try six again. Let's, let's test the, the first condition, actually. So let's do zero. I think what I'm doing is... Let me 
gonna take a look at this real quick. Choice not in potential moves. That is gonna be our input there. You're gonna print please enter a valid value. If choice is in pass moves, space is already been taken, try again. Um, let's take a look at the main. All true, or new board, print da, da, da. I'll play it for move. Player, I think. Um, so we're going to the board. Why is this kind of working? Choice not a potential move for keys. Oh! You should probably pass these variables in. Okay, cool. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's see. We're going to prop for move. We're going to pass in the board matrix. Our potential moves. Our player. And our past moves. All right. Let's save that. Then when we invoke it, we're going to pass in our board matrix, virtual moves, layer, pass moves. Okay, cool. Let's make sure that this looks good. So we're going to print our new board. Probably at this point, we also want to remove this because we're going to print our board a whole bunch of times. We just want to print it that one time in each loop. Okay, so let's give this a shot, save it. Let's try putting a zero. Please enter a valid value. Cool, perfect. Now what I can do is add that system clear back in. Sorry about that. This is a, always, always fun to live code because you're always going to run into bugs that you do not anticipate. Um, let's give it a shot. Let's make sure that everything's working correctly. So picking a position, let's try that again. Okay, yeah. So we're overwriting the that clear. Um, or with the clear, we're not showing what is actually being done or what the problem is here. So I need to um, uh, figure out a way to not draw the board um, until the... Uh, Um, till the, uh, the clear is happening. We can figure that out in just a second. But what we'll do is here is zero. Please enter a valid value. Okay, so what we're going to do here is probably the easiest thing to avoid this happening is put this in a loop. So what we're going to do here is, and this kind of makes sense, right? What we want is... If this choice is valid, uh, we want to um, move along. We want to print up the board again. If it's invalid, we want to ask again. So I'm going to do that same while loop, like the one that we have in our main. So what, what we're going to do is we're not going to leave this until we have a valid move. So in here, we're just going to print. But in here, all we need to do actually is just return. So what this is going to do is this is going to be a way to leave our, um, to leave our, actually, this is going to leave our entire function. If we want to just leave our while loop, this is another way to break an infinite while loop, is using the break keyword. And so what this is going to allow us to do is just get out of the while. And so let's give that a shot. Let's try that right now. So I'm going to do zero. Oh. Um. Oh. I'm going to need to put this choice in there, too. <laughs> um, so that was an interesting problem that we're having there in that since we defined the choice outside of our true, outside of our while loop, we were not given the opportunity to update choice again. And so just continually was looping through the choice that we didn't have any choice to change. So what I'm going to do now is bring it inside. And so now when I put an invalid value, it's just going to say, please enter a valid value uh, and give me the opportunity to 
pick something valid. Now let's try something valid. At this point, it redraws the board for us. And now let's try nine again. That space has already been taken. Try again. Awesome. This is exactly what we're expecting. So let's pick a valid position. And now, uh, again, we are running into the problem that we don't actually do anything when the user gets three in a row. And so let's get that done real quick. So in order to, to get that working, what we need to do is define our check for winner. In this case, what we're going to do is um, we are going to pass in probably our, just all we need in this case is our board matrix. So what I'm going to do is um, check our board matrix. And so there's, this is kind of, um, there's a couple of fun different ways to, to come up with a solution. Uh, what I'm going to do is fairly straightforward. I'm going to take a look at this board matrix and try to come up with some logic for how I'm going to determine the basically one of three broad uh, win, win conditions. There's one of the players has filled up one of the diagonals. So either here, the 159 or the 753. One of the players has filled out one of the rows. 6, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, or one of the players has filled out all of the columns, these three right here. So we're just going to do basically a whole bunch of if blocks, or like a, not a whole bunch, we're going to do a couple if blocks. So let's do the first one. So for uh, I in range, and so this is going to be checking for a, um, for the columns. And so what this is going to do, what range is going to do, range is a new type of, uh, a different data type from the, the dictionaries and lists that we've been going over today. What this does is basically, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but in this case, it allows us to quick, uh, easily iterate through a bunch of indexes. So in this case, I'm going to iterate through index 0, index 1, index 2. And that's what for I in range 3 is going to do for us. It's basically iterating through from zero, starting at zero, two, but not including three. So that's zero, one, two. Then what we're going to do, if board matrix at uh, index or i is equal to, and so in this case, we want to compare it against, let's see if it's the zeroth, we want to compare it against this one. This one is the third. And so that would be zero plus three. It, the same applies for the second column, right? This is the first index, and this is the fourth. This is the third or second index, and this is the fifth. And so in order to check if this, this, and this are equal, as well as this, this, and this, and, and, and the third column, all we need to do and check is check if all of these uh, elements at these at i, i plus 3, and i plus 6 are equal to each other. Matrix at i plus six. So if those are all equal to each other, um, then we're just going to return. Probably we want to return whoever won. Um, so we could either return board matrix at i, right? Because that's going to be the winner. Board matrix at i, board matrix at i plus three, and board matrix at i plus six are all going to be either x or o. Or we can pass in that player that we have in our main. And so I'm going to do it that way. So I'm going to return the player, which is either going to be capital X or capital O, and that's going to be our winner. So that's checking for our columns. Now let's check for our rows. For So let's do for I. This is an entirely new variable. It's a different block, so we can redefine our I as something else. And so um, let's do for I in range. And what we're going to do here is we want to grab this zeroth, the third, and the sixth. And we can use range for that as well. So what range will allow us to do is give us the range, but we can also choose a step. And so what this is saying is we want to pick the first nine, or, or sorry, zero through nine. So remember, not including 10. And we want to do every third one. So what this is going to give us is going to give us zero, um, zero, three, six. Actually, it's going to, give us nine as well. So we don't, what? Do we want to do that? Zero, three, six, nine. I guess we can go up to, six, 
seven, right? I think that's correct. All right. Zero, three, six. Yeah, that should work. If forward uh, matrix at I is equal to forward matrix, and so in this case, it's just going to be the next element, right? Seven, eight, nine. They're, they're right next to each other. So it's going to be I plus one is equal to board matrix at I plus two. Then we're going to, I should put a colon here. Then we're going to return player again. There's one more condition we need. Oh, actually, sorry. There's two, three, three more conditions we need to check for. Uh, this is our di diagonal. So we can do if board matrix, and this is hard code, right? So we're just going to check for the front diagonal. This is zero. This is four. This is uh, eight. Zero, four, eight. And then this is three, four, uh, six, I think. And so we're just going to we're going to check if those three value or those three values in the first diagonal and the second diagonal are equal to each other. So we'll do if board matrix at zero is equal to board matrix at four is equal to board matrix. So this is checking. So now that we've done this, we basically checked every potential win condition. Um, and we don't need to loop because we're only we're this is the only condition, right? For for rows and columns, we have three potential wins, uh, but for diagonal, there's only two, and there there's no pro, easy programmatic way to do it. So in this case, we can return our player. Um, let's see, return player. If board matrix is equal to I'm oh, sorry, board matrix at two is equal to board matrix at uh, four is equal to board matrix at, uh, I always forget, what is that? One, two, th zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Board matrix at six, right? So this is two, four, six. And then for the first one, that's zero, four, eight. Cool, that looks pretty good to me. If that's the case, then we're gonna return the player. Um, cool. So I've also decided that if none of that hits, that we want to provide some useful information. So I'm just going to return false. That means that we don't have a winner. Cool. So why don't we move back up to our main and do that check here? Is this is main. Yeah. Okay. So now this is going to be in our while loop and probably before we increment our move number, we want to do winner. So this is going to be storing either a false or one of those two strings, either X or O. Winner equals check for winner. And I think we passed in the board matrix and our player. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Now let's put some logic in here. Let's, depending on whether or not winner is true, let's uh, declare our winner. So I'll say if winner, right? So winner is going to be either a false value or uh, a string. One thing to keep in mind in Python, a string, as long as it's not an empty string, so the string, just empty string right there, is going to be what's known as falsy. That means that if you evaluate, if you make a check for a Boolean, uh, if you do if for it, if it's an empty string, it's going to be, it's going to evaluate to true as a Boolean. But if it is a string with characters in it, it's going to be true. So either we're going to have that false, or we're going to be we're, we're going to be dealing with a winner that is one of those strings, which is a truthy value in Python. So if winner, then we're going to declare winner. And let's just declare winner. We're going to pass in player. Cool. Now, one more condition that we need to worry about is. Uh, whether or not we've reached the game and there's no clear winner, where there's no three in a row, there's no columns, rows, or diagonals that have all of either X or Y. And that's what this move number, or one of the things that this move number is for. Once move number hits nine, that's all of the moves. If we have no clear winner and the move number is nine, that means that we have a tie. So we can say if winner or uh, move 
number is equal to nine. Then we're going to just declare the winner. Cool. So let's move down to our winner. Okay. So uh, we're passing in player. All right. So let's do it. All right. So um, on in this case, we're either getting that. Uh, we probably also want to pass in winner, right? Because if we just pass in player, we are going to automatically determine... Oh, wait, no, actually, we're going to pass in winner. So what's going to happen here is either winner is going to be that false um, that we talked about, or it's going to be one of these characters. So, again, we can use the, the fact that strings are truthy and false is not truthy. So we're going to say if... Play, or let's call this winner... Just because, yeah, we're going to say, basically, this is going to be very similar to the logic we think about it with, right? So if there's a winner, so if winner is true, then we're going to print, uh, let's print, and I'm going to use an F string again. Remember, F strings, we need to use this F at the beginning, and it allows us to use interpolation. It allows us to insert any value into our string um, that we would like to. So we're going to print, congratulations. Uh, congratulate that's how you spell it congratulations winner please come by again all right otherwise if there's no winner right if winner is false if the return from our check if winner is false then we're going to want to uh we're, we're going to want to declare a tie remember we're only invoking this declare winner function if either someone has won or all of the available moves have been exhausted. So we can just print, you two are very well matched. It's a tie. Okay, so let's give that a shot. Um, and then we're going to return, uh, uh, let's see, let's return... Actually, we don't need to return anything in this. Uh, let's go up to our main. If we've entered this, the game is over. So all we need to do here is just return, right? This is going to allow us to leave our function, leave the game entirely, because all the only function that we've invoked in our global namespace is main. So now I think if we've done everything correctly, we have ourselves a functioning tic tac toe game. So let's give it a shot. Um, so X is turn. X picks the seven. Let's try some error handling. O picks a seven. That's already been taken. Perfect. Let's try some gibberish. Actually, yeah, let's tr try some gibberish. Not a valid value. All right. So that seems to be working. Let's put O's position in upper right. Cool. Uh, X is picking an eight. O is one. Let's do five. I want to make sure that nobody wins. I'm going to accidentally win this, aren't I? Uh, X is going to pick 6. Um, and then O is 3. And then, oh, X, yep, I accidentally won. But let's see if we have a win. Congratulations, X. Please win again. Come again. So that looks successful. It looks like we successfully won that game. Let's try to actually win this time. All right. Or not win, I guess. So uh, X is 1. Y is going to be that. O is going to be 5, X is 3, uh, O is 2, X is 8, O is 6, and then X is 4. You two are very well matched. It's a tie. So awesome. We have successfully created a tic-tac-toe game. Um, hopefully, uh, some, of the, some of the lessons uh, in decomposition got through. It's a very important, valuable tool to use when you're coding. Um, it allowed me to very quickly really get into the actual coding without really even um, without even really thinking too hard in, in coding. I just broke it down into simpler problems. And in the simple act of doing that, I basically defined and named the, the, the four main functions that I was going to be using in that. And so that's a really powerful tool. I also hope that I shared a little bit of the fun of Python. It definitely um, is a great exciting intriguing programming language it reads just like english it, it's a lot more accessible um 
And it's just generally, in my opinion, a really, really fun, powerful language um, that's exciting. And I hope some of you were able to code along. Maybe you have a functioning tic-tac-toe game available for you. If you were not able to or were not interested in, in coding along, you can always take a look at the, um, the finished code that I have written here. We're going to upload that to our Discord channel. Uh, and so when you join that channel, you can take a look at the code yourselves. And like I said earlier, uh, it also is a really great resource if you're learning to code, especially if you are using our free App Academy open content. Uh, and so uh, unless anyone has any questions, comments, uh, uh, I think this is about the end of it. Let me take a look at the chat. Looks like, uh, no, I, uh, I, I I can see the resemblance, but I am, am unfortunately not J. Cole. App Academy did give him an ask, but he's actually really only codes in Ruby. So uh, he wasn't really interested in doing intro to Python. Um, but let's see. Uh, I think, again, I'm going to just wait a minute or two to see if anyone's interested at all. Um, and any questions, uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna end for the day. Um, or if you don't have any, you know, if you don't have any direct questions about what we've done here, about Python as a whole, about coding in general, decomposition, any of the concepts that we went over today, um, feel free to share if you um, have any experience with Python. If this is something that is not entirely new to you, or if you are one of those people who have figured out that tic tac toe is a solved game and figured out how to win every single time. Um, anyone wants to share their insight into that? Um, I'll, I'll be here. Today. Um, all right, looks like um, not getting responses. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this stream. Uh, I hope everyone had a, a, a great time, learned a little bit of something, um, and has a great rest of your weekend. Thanks for showing up.